Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending April 29th, 2017. Thank you again, uh, Tom H., for some of the links to the articles in today's show and credit and all the descriptions and links will be given in the description box down below. First up, from ABC News, spacecraft survives unprecedented trip between Saturn's rings. That's the Cassini spacecraft. And uh, it has su survived the trip this Thursday. It took a trip through the rings. It doesn't really say in this article, but in some other uh, radio shows that I listened to about the Cassini spacecraft, they said uh, they did a really smart thing. They took the DISH telescope and aimed it in the direction of travel so it would act as a shield when it went plunging through the area close to the ring so that if it ended up running into any debris, the uh, antenna itself would take the hit. And I'm guessing there's enough redundancy left into the antenna that if it had some little holes poked in it wouldn't be a big deal, but it was very important to protect the equipment inside. So it says Cassini skimmed 1900 miles closer than ever before and came within 200 miles of the innermost visible ring. Scientists say the picture showed details never seen before. After 13 years of Cassini orbiting the planet, Saturn continues to surprise us. It's going to make 21 more trips going through, uh, going closer and closer to the planet through the rings. And then um, it says about a, a week before, um, 21 more crossings, crossings are planned about a week before Cassini's fatal plunge in mid-September. Um, then it's going to take the fatal plunge right into the uh, planet itself. So um, cool, cool way to go out. You know, it could probably get some more interesting information too by flying in and getting that close of pictures and that close of views. So I think it would be well worth it really. And from Fox News Science, Dragonfly drone could explore Saturn moon Titan. Yeah, I think Saturn uh, is is very much worth uh, exploring. It has an atmosphere very similar to Earth. Um, it is one. Of, I think it's the only moon that has anything like a a, a thick atmosphere, and uh, that's in Saturn too. So anyway, the plan is to. Uh, uh, well, it's just a plan right now. They're, they don't really. It's just a proposal. A relocated lander could explore the hazy skies of Saturn's moon Titan according to a new mission proposal as the eight bladed whirlybird travels across the moon it could investigate some of the most promising potentially habitable sites on the Saturn satellite where methane and ethane fall from the sky and flow as rivers and lakes now it's the size of, of uh, it's 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 around the size of our moon I think it may be slightly larger but not by very much so it's got very low gravity but the atmosphere is pretty much as thick as Earth's in fact it's slightly thicker about 20 percent thicker so it's got everything needed for propeller type of propulsion or even a, an aircraft like an airplane um, can can uh, be used on that planet or in that moon very easily but less gravity so you got a real big advantage there too and they say this one that they're uh, generally thinking of using if they do use it can actually travel maybe tens of kilometers at a time and then obviously it would have to sit down and somehow recharge or something like that using solar panels or whatever kind of power system they have with it. So, The lander size instrument known as Dragonfly would take advantage of Titan's low gravity and thick atmosphere to visit multiple sites over several years, moving from one promising site to the next and recharging between the brief flights. So it doesn't, I can't really tell from this, it doesn't really look like it has solar panels on this, but it could be some other way that they've got it deployed or something like that. I, I couldn't believe with the size of it being that it was something airborne that they would use some type of um, nuclear reactor, although I guess that's possible too. They could use some kind of nuclear power to power the craft, but I still think that's uh, pretty cool. And it would be a nice, easier way to explore too. No wheels to have to wear out or anything like that. And uh, it would be cool too if they had some redundancy in the way they had the blades too, to where maybe if uh, one or one or two uh, of the propeller blades failed, the craft could uh, maybe still continue flying, just maybe be a little less performance than optimal. So. And last up, from The Verge, an artificial womb successfully grew baby sheep, and humans could be next. Inside what looks like oversized Ziploc bags strewn with tubes of blood and fluid, eight fetal lambs continue to develop much like they would have inside their mothers. Over four weeks, their lungs and brains grew. They sprouted wool, opened their eyes, wheeled around, and learned to swallow, according to a new study that takes the final step toward an artificial womb. One day, this device could help to bring premature humans to term outside the uterus, but right now, it has only been tested on sheep. So kind of got a little bit of a creepy factor in there, but I tell you what, I suppose if you had a child in danger and it had to somehow be taken out of the womb for uh, to be able to survive and uh, become, uh, you know, full, fully grown enough to be able to survive on their own, it would be something um, I as a parent would want to at least have available as a possibility. And I think 
really the way this is developing, we're probably talking way less than 10 years. We might we might be trying this out in two to three years, really. So anyway, that's about it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.